Hi everyone, it's Fred Pimpton. In this video, we're going to finish up our discussion on solving linear inequalities. So from the previous video, we talked about solving linear inequalities and also graphing the solution set and writing the solution set in using interval notation. Well, we're going to talk about solving linear inequalities that have no solution and also solutions that are all real numbers and then be able to solve compound inequalities at the end. So if you remember from our previous video, we talked about solving equations that had possibly no solution or all real numbers. Well, the same can be true with inequalities. So these are called inequalities with unusual solution sets. So if you solve an inequality and you have no solution, well, how do you know if that's no solution or not? Well, if you eliminate the variables, in other words, if you try to get the x variable on the same side of the inequality and the variables cancel out, and you obtain a false statement, in other words, the inequality is a false statement, then you have no solution, or the solution set is called empty. On the other hand, if you solve an inequality and you have a true statement for all real numbers, that means you eliminate the variable again, so that's why it's a special case, but the inequality is a true statement instead of a false statement. So again, just because you cancel out the variables doesn't mean no solution. You have to make sure that the statement is either true or false. So let's try out example three. Solve the following linear inequalities. We don't know if they have unusual solution sets or not. Use interval notation to express the solution set and then graph each solution set on a number line, just like we did in the previous video. So number one, we're gonna solve this inequality. Two times parentheses x minus one is less than two x minus one. So remove any grouping symbols by distributing the two through the parentheses. You have two x attract two is less than two x minus one. Well, now you have to get your constant terms on the same side of the inequality. So add two. So you have two x is less than two x plus two minus one is positive one. And now move all the variable terms to the same side of the inequality by subtracting two x to the left side. And you notice that two x attract two x gives you zero is less than one. So again, it doesn't mean that there's no solution. You have to make sure that this statement is either true or false. Well, zero is less than one. This is a true statement for all real numbers. So that means the solution set is the set of all real numbers and interval notation would be negative infinity to infinity. In other words, the set of all real numbers are going to be solutions to this inequality. So it doesn't matter what the value of x is, if you plug in any value of x, you will come up with a true statement at the end. And so this means infinitely many solutions. What does the number line look like if you have infinitely many solutions? Well, there are no tick marks or values of place on the number line. This represents all different x values that are solutions, and they all are solutions. So the entire number line would be shaded to the right and to the left. So this represents all real numbers, which would be negative infinity to infinity with parentheses. So there's one special type of special solution set. Let's try a different problem now. Number two, this time the inequality is negative three times parentheses x minus two less than or equal to negative three x plus two. So let's start solving. Negative three distributed through the parentheses. You'll have negative three x plus six is less than or equal to negative three x plus two. Move all the constant terms to the same side of the inequality. So subtract six to the right side. Negative three x is less than or equal to negative three x. Two subtract six will give you negative four. And now move the variable terms to the same side of the inequality. So add three x to the left side of the inequality to combine those and you have negative three x plus three x will give you zero, less than or equal to, and then the right side is negative four. So this is saying zero is less than or equal to negative four. Well, zero is not equal to negative four, nor is zero less than negative four. Zero is greater than negative four. So this is a false statement for all real numbers. So the solution set is what's called the empty set. In other words, the solution set is empty. So there's a special notation for empty set. 
It's a zero with a slash through it, like that, and this means the empty set. Now, what would the number line look like that represents the solution set if there are no solutions? Well, here's your number line. Again, there would be no tick marks or values to place on the number line. And it's an empty number line. In other words, no part of the number line is shaded to represent a solution. So there are no solutions. So again, make sure that you check whether the inequality after you cancel out the variables is either true or false. It tells whether it's true, where you have all real numbers as a solution, or the statement is false, which means you have no solution. You have to check whether the statement is true or false. All right, so the last type of problem that we're going to talk about in this video is solving compound inequalities. So say that you have two different inequalities, such as negative 3 is less than 2x plus 1, and at the same time, 2x plus 1 is also less than or equal to 3. So notice that 2x plus 1 is in common with both inequalities. It actually turns out that you can condense these two inequalities because 2x plus 1 can be represented in the middle of two inequalities together called a compound inequality. So here's how you can rewrite this. Negative 3 is less than 2x plus 1, just like the first inequality. And then 2x plus 1 is also less than or equal to 3. So when you have two or more inequality symbols, that's what's called a compound inequality. And the word and does not appear when you write it in this shorter form. And so that means that you're talking about the intersection of the two different solution sets. In other words, what do the two solution sets have in common? That's the intersection. So why can we use this shorter form? Well, it turns out the shorter form enables us to solve both inequalities at the same time or simultaneously. What you do is you perform each operation on all three parts of the inequality. So remember from the previous several examples, we talked about always making sure you subtract or add and multiply and divide on both sides of the inequality. Well now with the compound inequality, you'll have three parts. Make sure you do the same operation to all three parts of the inequality, and then you can solve the compound inequality. So let's try a couple problems out with example four. Solve the following compound inequalities, use interval notation to express the solution set, and also graph the solution set using a number line. So number one, negative 11 is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 1, which is less than or equal to negative 5. So again, this is what's called a compound inequality. Because you have two or more inequality symbols. Well, let's see what we need to do so that we can isolate the x variable. So we need to get 1, this constant term, away from the x term. So subtract 1 on all three parts of the inequality. So negative 11 minus 1 is negative 12. Less than or equal to negative 2x is less than or equal to negative 5. Subtract 1 gives you negative 6. You only reverse the inequality when you divide by a negative. So notice in this step, if we want to isolate the x, you need to divide all three parts by negative 2. So this is when you would want to reverse the inequality symbol. So negative 12 divided by negative 2 becomes 6. It was less than or equal to, so now it's greater than or equal to x. And then, again, greater than or equal to negative 6 divided by negative 2 becomes 3. So this is a really weird way of writing the linear inequality. You can rewrite this as 3 is less than or equal to, x is still in the middle, and it's still less than or equal to 6. So those mean the same. So again, just a reminder, reverse the inequality symbol, the compound inequality. when multiplying or dividing by a negative number. So now let's talk about the solution set. The solution set can be written into interval notation as the solution set would be no further to the left than x equals 3, and you want to include 3, so it's a square bracket, and then comma, how far do you go to the right for the solution set? Well, x can be no larger than 6, and you do want to include 6. So square bracket 3 comma 6. Okay, and then the number line, how would the solution set look on a number line? Well, this time we have two separate numbers to worry about, so these are all the x values for the solution, 3 
comes before 6 on the number line, going from left to right. You have 3 and the square bracket opening to the right. You have 6 with the square bracket opening to the left. And the solution set is between 3 and 6. Okay, let's try one more. Number 2. This time the inequality is 8 is less than 4x subtract 5, which is less than or equal to 15. And this is a compound inequality. So let's isolate the x term. So add 5 to each of the three parts. So 8 plus 5 is 13, less than 4x, after you cancel out the negative 5 with plus 5. And then 15 plus 5 makes it 20. So now isolate the x by dividing all three parts by positive 4. So do not reverse the inequality. This becomes 13 fourths is less than x, less than or equal to 20 divided by 4 gives you 5. And so the solution set written in interval notation would be all the x values greater than 13 fourths. So that means you have a parenthesis on 13 fourths because you do not want to include x equals 13 fourths. And then it's up to x equals 5. So comma, 5, and you want to include 5, so square bracket. And then the last thing to do, graph the solution set on the number line. So our number line would include 13 fourths and 5. And we have a parenthesis that's opening to the right with 13 fourths. And we have a square bracket on 5, opening to the left, and the solutions are between the two. So that's how you solve compound inequalities. You, whatever operation you do to one part of the inequality, you have to do to all three parts of the inequality. And make sure that if you ever divide or multiply by a negative number, you have to reverse not just one inequality symbol, but both inequality symbols. So this finishes up solving linear inequalities and also compound inequalities. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about quadratic functions.